Okay, so today is a topic that I'm really excited to come to you with. Um, it's a topic that I'm really passionate about and I feel like it's my area of genius. So I really think I can add some value to you guys in this video. So um, it's habit stacking. Habit stacking is something that I've spent a lot of time perfecting, um, putting a lot of energy toward. Um, and I have some tips that I can share with you guys that will make the difference between the way that Beyonce spends her 24 hours and the way that the rest of us tend to. So if you're interested in tips and tricks for being more efficient during your day, um, hang around because today we're talking about habit stacking. Okay. So habit stacking, why should we even care about habit stacking? I'll tell you why I started caring about it was because I was interested in becoming the best version of myself. And they always say, well, you need to act as if you need to do what that person would do and you need to make time for that. And so I just thought, well, I don't get any more hours in the day. So what can I do to make the difference? And I read an amazing book I highly recommend called Atomic Habits. Um, that talks about habit stacking, and that's how I got started. So um, basically what I did was I decided what version of myself do I want to be? Um, what version of myself would feel um, the most authentic to me? And what version of myself could I be proud of? Um, I think it's important that every year we kind of edit our lives and we decide what person we're becoming. Um, and so that's what I did. So I wrote down key areas of, um, you know, what would I like to see differently? And then I started thinking, well, what kind of habits would that version have? Um, it could be having a makeup routine or a skincare routine or going to the gym or getting a walk in the morning. It could be whatever you want. But then um, we're going to take those desires and we're going to insert them into our day, Beyonce style where we're efficient and we're effective and it doesn't really take that much more energy and your sleep schedule doesn't change um, and the important things that you're already doing during your day don't have to move. Um, so we're looking for downtime and dead time during your day that we can um, pile in some really good new habits. So um, let's take a look at um, how we get started doing that. Okay. Tip number one for habit stacking is to write down the times of your day that are empty air time, time that you're doing something else um, that isn't terribly productive or requires a lot of mental energy. Um, instead, it's something that we have to do um, and it takes up quite a bit of time. So an example for that would be driving. If you have to drive to and from work, that is empty airtime. You're doing something, but it's not really mentally exhausting. It's not, it doesn't require a lot of your attention. So um, also it could be washing the dishes. Um, doing chores is a really good time to habit stack. Um, if you're gardening, um, doing yard work, um, if you're going on a walk, um, what are some other really good um, downtime just for some ideas? Um, when you're showering, that's another really good one. Um, and what else? When you're cooking or when you're meal prepping, these are all times of the day that we do consistently, but it's just, it's it takes up a, a large portion of your day, but it's not actually um, moving the needle too much in the direction of who you wanna become. So these are perfect opportunities for habit stacking. So tip number one is to write down what is true for you. What during the day are areas of time where you just aren't really doing too much, but you do them consistently. That's the key. Okay, tip number two. So it's like we talked about earlier. You want to decide what version of yourself do you want to bring to the world? Which version of yourself would you be so proud of in the mirror? What version of yourself would you be so happy and grateful to be every day? We're gonna look at those habits and then we're going to put them into our day. So I think the best way to explain this tip is to give you um, the example of my own life. So I decided that 
for my life, I wanted to show up as this like beautiful kind of like Grecian goddess vibes, like long, thick hair. So I learned about what do the women do in the areas of the world that have the most beautiful hair? And I learned about it and I narrowed down what would I have to do consistently to make that happen? I need to have a weekly routine where I continue to do these things so that I get the results they're getting. So that's example number one. Um, this Grecian goddess also has very white teeth because she absolutely loves kind of a more natural face and a really bright lipstick. She loves to smile. She loves just to have her mouth be very welcoming. Um, you know, when I walk in the room, I'm smiling. I'm kind of glowing and I'm talking to people. I'm not insecure. Um, another one is I really wanted to always have painted nails. I feel like I'm the most polished the most confident when my nails look good. I don't know, I kind of look down at them and I think that girl's got it together, you know? And it sets the tone for my day and it, um, it's been something that I really enjoy doing. So another thing might be, um, you know, this goddess, she looks like a goddess every day. She wears um, jewelry that adorns her and she has, um, a really refined makeup look that just accentuates her natural features because she's confident about them. She's not hiding anything, but she's accentuating them. So that meant I needed a solid makeup routine. So I went on TikTok and YouTube and I just, I watched so many videos of these women saying, this is how you get your makeup to last all day. This is how you avoid creasing. This is how you look for what colors work for your skin tone. Um, you know, but what goes along with that is doing my makeup every day, but also washing my brushes every week. So that was something else I had to have it stack in. Um, and of course, if your makeup is going to lay nicely, you've got to have a good skincare routine, right? And I also wanted to be a goddess that feels totally comfortable without any makeup on. She is comfortable in her own skin. Therefore, I just, I had to have a good makeup routine. So I learned about what are the most beautiful skin types in the world, you know? Like, what are these women doing? And I learned about the Native Americans and um, God bless the African-American women who just have had it nailed this whole time. And then also, um, you know, Asian cu cultures, they just, they just age so beautifully. So I learned about all these things I decided these are the things I have to figure out how to put into my day. And if you're interested in what my actual habit stacking routine looks like so that I can accomplish all of that and still have a life, <laughs> let me know in the comments. I would be super happy and excited to do a video on that. But um, I just want you to see what's possible when you get really good at habit stacking. And when you keep showing up like this every week, your habits create your reality. So I, I don't have to worry every day. Am I aging well? Is my hair taken care of? Do I look presentable? Because as long as I keep hitting these habit milestones during my week, the results are guaranteed. And that's what's available to you too. Okay, tip number three. So we're looking for areas that are dead time, just open air time that we can pile in new habits. The reason that's really important is psychologically, you show up to these moments all the time. So they're habits that already exist. They're habits that you're on autopilot. They're habits that you consistently do. They don't take a lot of effort. You move in, it's part of your routine. So when we look for these moments, um, we want to make sure that we set some kind of a reminder for our subconscious mind that triggers, hey, there's a new action required and it's at this time. So I like to do that by um, leaving little notes for myself. Um, you know, maybe a little like post-it note in the area where the action should take place. 
like I want to journal this morning so put a sticky note next to the coffee maker that says don't forget to journal because I always go to the coffee maker when I wake up so then it triggers oh yeah there's an action because you know we're trying to add new things into our routine so we should obviously be gentle with ourselves things take time but help yourself out you know leave yourself a reminder so that you don't feel deflated that you forgot um I think a really successful um, little reminder for myself that I've left um, was I really wanted to start my day with a reset house. I really wanted to start my day with the kitchen that's clean. Like nothing is soaking, nothing is like, you know, on the side of the sink waiting to be addressed. I wanted to start my day totally like I just walked into an Airbnb it's not my stuff, but it's tidy kind of thing. So what I did was I left out a drying mat at the side of our sink. And um, so during the day when I like go to put things in the sink, um, I don't soak them. It's a reminder to my subconscious, like, no, we don't soak things. We wash them and then we dry them. And then those things um, go back into the cupboard before bedtime. So um, that was a really good one, and it's actually working really well for me. So let me know if you try that one, and it works well for you too. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's just a matter of um, being gentle with yourself and leave yourself a little reminder. There's no harm in that. Tip number four. So your mantra needs to be, I am the type of person that does and fill in the blank. This is so important. When, you, um, when you've arrived to the moment where it's time to act on your new habit, you reinforce yourself when you step up. So I want a journal this morning. I sit down at my desk and when I open my journal, I say either out loud or in my head, I am the kind of person that journals every morning while I drink my coffee. This is so important. And if you follow my channel for any length of time, you know that subconscious reprogramming and self-identity work is my passion. I love it. Um, totally geek out on that stuff. So this is a really important one because it tells your subconscious, oh, I'm that person. Okay, I need to remember that I'm that person. And so what'll happen is every day when you have your coffee, you'll start getting light bulbs um, like, oh, we journal um, because your subconscious is just trying to support your self-identity. And it does that by um, giving you feedback during the day of like, oh, we should go here and we should do this um, because it's trying to support who you believe you are. And so by telling it every time that you do this action, I am the type of person that does this. I am this person with repetition. Your subconscious mind's not going to argue with you. It's just going to say, oh, we're that person. And it's going to start sending you reminders during the day to help you not forget that you've set this new habit. So give that a try. Um, but I would be remiss if during this portion of the video, I didn't shout out to my own subconscious reprogramming programs. Like I said, it's a huge passion of mine. So I've got a website now with... Um, Programs to help you rewire uh, your subconscious for the major areas of fear that most people have in their life. The fear of not being loved, the fear of being poor, the fear of dying alone, the, the fear of poor health. Okay, these are all fears that keep us from realizing our potential. And I want to be the one to help you through that because shadow work is work. <laughs> shadow work was brutal. Um, I had a lot of dark nights of the soul and I just um, kind of like habit stacking. I looked for, okay, if I had to redo this, how could I do this in half the time and how could I make sure I was successful in the end of things? So if that interests you, take a look at my website. The link is down below. Um, I've got programs. I've got um, consultation calls. You can talk one on one with me and we can talk through what's going on. And then um, I'll build you your personal tape to help you rewire your subconscious. So 
I'd love to work with you if you feel called to work with me. Tip number five. When habits start to get hard is when you've been consistent for several days, but it's not really your identity yet. That's okay. It happens to all of us, and we have to persevere through that. But I have tips for how to help you through those moments. So when you are in the middle of your new habit and you start to feel like, oh, this is a chore. I don't want to do this. Um, Take a pause. Okay, because this is not meant to be punishment. This is meant to be the version of yourself that you want to be. Okay, this is the stepping stones and the breadcrumbs to who you asked to be. Okay, so it's remem- let's remember during these moments, okay, this is my why. This is why I'm doing this. And I would, I would um, in those moments... Look around at your environment and how can you sweeten the deal, okay? How can you sweeten your environment so that you want to show up and do this thing? Um, My example of journaling, um, I'll continue with it, is I went to a stationery store and I bought such a cute journal. I bought a um, really cute pen and the pen was only meant for that journal and so it was just kind of an experience when i opened up and i had my coffee um another example i have of this is when i was working on my um, skincare routine um it just felt like so much extra time i was spending um because before i basically did a moisturizer and called it good (laughs) um So there was just more steps. And so I started feeling kind of bitter about the whole thing, okay? But I knew my goal is this Grecian babe who ages well, looks amazing, makeup lays really well on the skin, and that's who I needed to be. So I was like, we're here and we're doing this. So the way I sweetened the deal was I will dim the lights a little bit in our bathroom, and I will also put on a silk robe like I used to kind of have like um like a terry cloth one and then I had kind of like a fuzzy one that was more like for comfort and not cuteness, which is fine. I still own it. Um but I put on a silk robe when I do my skincare. Um and then I play music. You know, sometimes I play like spa music if I'm feeling like that. Um but a lot of times I play music that makes me feel super feminine makeup that or not makeup (laughs) music that makes me feel powerful Um, and a lot of the songs i find are looking for playlists on youtube music um, with the keyword like divine feminine or um, boss babe or something like that and then there are just playlists that exist um, that someone else has put together so i'll just play one of those while i'm getting my skincare going and then a lot of times I'm so in the flow and I'm just loving it and I'm feeling so feminine and girly that I end up doing extra than it actually needed to because I just don't want the moment to end. Um, like for example, I've been trying to add in a, um, is it gua sha stone? Um, which is like facial massage after your skincare to help it kind of really get pressed into the skin and then it helps your bone structure to be more defined. Um, I found that before I was going through all these extra steps to make this moment extra sweet, I didn't want to really spend the extra step to do that. I was kind of like, well, you know, my bone structure is fine. I'll skip it tonight. Um, But now it's like, it's pretty easy for me to do. I don't want the moment to end. You know, but in that vein too, my other tip would be um, don't let yourself skip two days in a row. That tip comes from the Atomic Habits book I was talking about. And that's one of his personal rules is it's like if you're really not feeling it today, you can skip, okay? But don't skip two days in a row. That's his rule. And it's really worked well for me too. It works for me with working out, um, with cooking dinner, um, with my skincare, taking my makeup off. Um, because some nights it's like, 
I got to bed a little bit late and it's like, I just don't want to do all of this, you know? So I'll let myself skip a day and then I do not skip a second day. So um, I think you'll be really successful with that tip. Um, let me know in the comments if that works for you or if you have your own little rules that you've created for yourself that help to keep you accountable because everyone here would love to hear them, especially me, because this is a passion of mine. So um, yeah, I think I would really appreciate that. So um, otherwise, you know, we don't want to recreate the wheel here. So if you have any uh, successful habit stacks that you've created, um, post them in the comments. I would love to read them and I'd love to respond and we can share ideas and share notes. So um, yeah, this was my introduction to habit stacking. And if there's any portion of this video that you would like more information on or um, any advice on how I could take your moment of your day and make it more impactful, just let me know down below and I would love to talk with you. So have a great day and good luck. Okay, tip number 